don't want another kid to have to go through what I had to go through. This 12 year old boy wants to call attention to something that is a lot more common than many people realize. He has fetal alcohol syndrome. Now, because he was diagnosed, he and his family can work to manage it. But researchers found most children exposed to alcohol in the womb are not being diagnosed. Channel 9's Kristen Lee investigated and learned there is a new push to change that. Nico Moon is an outdoorsy 12 year old who dreams big. I kind of want to be one of the smallest NBA players ever. He loves his dog and like most tweens, he has occasional spats with his sister. I, but what I stood out most to me, I'm like, wait a minute, is that Nico uh, is incredibly mindful. I need to remember that I have, I, I'm working on stopping myself. All right, let's go. Eat together. You want to give me your hat? Yep, there we go. Stopping himself right, from an outburst ready? of frustration. Nope. Nico and his mom have learned to be patient with one another, like when various house rules and chores are forgotten. That's part of an FASD, and so we don't get angry about that. We don't fuss about that. We say that's that's your brain, so let's correct it now and move on. Before adopting Nico in Russia, his new parents were warned by doctors. But I didn't care because I was already in love. I don't tell people that Nico was adopted when we say that he has fetal alcohol syndrome because it doesn't matter. What matters is he has a tremendous amount of potential if we can get the right resources for him. Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Hello. The search for the best possible treatment led the Moon family to Dr. Yasmin Centurius, who runs one of only two clinics in North Carolina that specialize in FASD. Nico lives it every day. He's known the challenges. Centurius told me FASD patients struggle with three neurobehavioral challenges. Self-regulatory functions or ability to regulate mood or behavior, neurocognitive problems including lower IQs and difficulty following instructions, and adaptive abilities such as understanding social cues. And we need to be identifying this disorder more. That's exactly what researchers are working on at UNC's Nutrition Research Institute in Kannapolis. In her research, Cecilia Kwan found that a mother's alcohol use reduces the placenta's ability to deliver nutrients to her baby. So in other words, the baby is basically starving. Knowing prenatal alcohol exposure is an unfortunate reality. Kaylee Heffrick is figuring out how to reverse its effects. Iron supplemented diet can uh, basically reverse some of the iron deficiency. One study co-led by the Institute's Dr. Philip May was published last year in the prestigious Journal of the American Medical Association. Researchers collected data on 6,639 first graders across the U.S. Of 222 children diagnosed with FASD in the study, only two had been previously diagnosed. That begs the question, why are so few children diagnosed? Dr. Centurius told me some medical professionals hesitate to discuss FASD. There is a fear that you will make a mother guilty, that you will make anybody guilty for anything that they've already done that they can't undo. Let's call it what it is and address it. Leah Moon believes kids with FASD are often misunderstood instead of getting treatment. Daddy and you are amazing. Given Nico's success, oh, they both hope to empower other families. Like, I just want to help the kid out. That was our Kristen Lee reporting. Doctors are stressing that FASD is 100% preventable and that for women, no amount of alcohol during pregnancy is safe. Any woman who does drink while pregnant should talk to their doctor about dietary changes and supplements to try to help with the baby's brain development.